Aloha guys, this is Joyce from Enjoy Scrapping 2 and today I'm going to do something a little different. Um, I'm going to start kind of like a series of uh, product shares. So what I mean by that is um, I'll choose a specific type of products and then we will kind of go over the differences between them and you can kind of see how they work. Um, so if you are kind of interested on a certain product but um, you're not quite sure how it works and uh, things like that, so um, you can have like a better knowledge of, I guess, certain products. So maybe, you know, you can um, make your decisions on what um, you want to purchase. So uh, I'm going to be going over a lot of different types of mediums that I use for uh, my stamps. And if there's a specific um, product that you're interested in, uh, please leave a comment below. And if I have it, then I will um, uh, share it with you guys. So uh, this is actually my second take, uh, only because the first one that I did um, seemed a little dark. I'm still kind of in the process of um, placing my lights and things like that so um, it won't be so dark for you guys. So hopefully this one won't be that dark because when I'm looking at the camera it doesn't look dark but um, when I s try to uh, upload it sometimes it's a little uh, dark. So first I'm going to go over different um, brands uh, watercolors. So today's focus is going to be watercolor crayons. Okay, so I have several different types of crayons and they're all uh, different priced and so we'll kind of go over uh, each one. So first off this is my Stradler uh, watercolor crayons. This is a 24 set of crayons and this is about $25. Um, so this, they all kind of look like this. Um, they, this one is pretty good size. They're all pretty good size. And the colors seem to be very uh, vivid as well. Um, but I did notice that these crayons were a little bit harder than um, the other ones that I'll be sharing. Uh, second one here I have is, this is a Faber-Castell watercolor crayons. This is um, Kit's crayons. So they're student grade. This says age is three and up, but um, this costs around like $10 or so, and it has 15 watercolor crayons. I have never actually used this one, so we'll be kind of trying it out together. So here it is, the sizes, a little bit smaller than um, the other crayon. And it looks like it's kind of like um, triangular shape, I guess, for the kids to kind of um, get a grip better. And it has a, a brush included, and this is really uh, like a short brush. So that's um, that, and we'll take a look at this as well. And then this right here is the Lyra watercolors. And uh, this is 48 pieces, and this runs about $45 to about um, $65, depending on where you buy it. And um, this is actually a really good quality of uh, watercolor crayons. And the size is really good, too, as well. Okay, so we have that. And um, and then there are something like this. This is a water soluble oil pastels. So even though it's oil pastels, they kind of work similar to uh, the watercolor crayons. This uh, is more kind of like the gelatos because it has kind of like um, it's oil pastel, so it's oily. Okay, so then you can buy, this is a set of 24, 
and this is around like eight to ten dollars depending on where you buy it so um, you can kind of take a look around for prices so we'll take a look at this and as well as my Karen Dosh crayons so the Karen Dosh crayons is the most uh, expensive crayons that I own uh, this uh, was my Christmas gift from my husband those of you guys have seen my haul videos I did a haul video when I got this so this is a set of 84 and this runs about 160 there's a larger set as well, as well as smaller sets. So, um, the, of course, the prices vary um, on that. And this, I think there is a smaller set. I'm not sure, but I thought there was like a 12 set. For the Lyra as well, this is the largest size that it comes in. is a 48, but they also have a smaller size. Um, I think it was 24 I'm not quite sure and this is just like this and this is um, the only one that I've seen I don't think there's any um, more I think this is it okay so let's take a look So as you can see, I already kind of um, did some because I already filmed this once before. And it seemed a little dark and so I don't want, so I'm redoing it. I don't know if this lighting is better or uh, just let me know in the comments to see, you know, if it's kind of too dark. So, um... What we'll do is um, this right here is the Canson mixed media um, pad. So it's for my like art journaling and things like that. And so we'll kind of use this right here. And we're going to see how um, vivid the colors are. I'm going to try t to um, choose maybe like the same color so you can kind of see. So I like blue. So let's take a look at blue um, and see how it does. This is this is not bad this is um, kind of creamy it's a little dusty and then um, let's try wet it and see so yeah so like that so all the uh, lines cut disappear it blends well Maybe it should write it down. That would help. If I could find a pen, it would be good. Is a sharp. So this was the Fair Castell. This is a um, kids. Okay, next we'll look at the straddler. I'll just write it all down. And then we'll do the um, Lyra. And then we'll do, what is this, portfolios. And then lastly, the Karen Dosh. So Karen Dosh is an artist grade um, crayons. 
so their pigmentation is very high. I love to use uh, watercolor crayons with um, my stamps because I'm a stamper. I'm not an artist. So I'm not going to be like making a painting or anything like that. And But um, a lot of the artists um, use it for paintings and things. Okay, so... This is a straddler, and you can kind of still kind of see that pencil, mo the mark that I made. You see, the mark is kind of there. Zoom you in just a little bit more. And um, I noticed this is a little harder. I am kind of surprised that this is a little harder than the Faber-Castell, the kids' um, crayons. The, this one was smoother than this one. And this one costs more than that. Let me write down the prices. So this is around 10. And this is around 25. And this was about 45 for a set of 15. And this is a 24. And this is a 48. Portfolios run about 8 to $10. And this right here is 24 set. And the Karen Dosh is around 160 but this is 84 set, okay? So next we'll take a look at, since I have the portfolios, I'll do this. And look at the sizes. They're really good sizes as well. These watercolor crayons will last you a very long time. It's not like um, the Crayola Kids um, crayons where you color and then it just gets smaller really fast. This actually is, um, it doesn't wear as fast. So I'm going to, this right here is super creamy. Super, out of all this, this portfolio is the uh, creamiest so far. And it's a darker color. I couldn't find the lighter one. And it blends really well. You can see that. There is no mark. All disappeared. So that's that. And then we'll take a look at the Lyra. This is also very creamy. It kind of goes on like lipstick. All the mark disappeared. It blends really well. So the only thing that actually left the mark is the straddlers. I'm surprised. So the Karen Dosh is very, very smooth. And look at the pigmentation, how dark it is. Because um, this is artist quality pencil, uh, watercolor, so has a lot more pigment. You only need a little bit. So that's that. And now I'll show you how I like to use it. I 
I like to use it with kind of like images like this because you can kind of color it in uh, and then stamp so I like that when I did an introduction on this uh, Moon Lake stamp from Stampin' Up I used uh, watercolor crayons to stamp it so I'll show you So how I like to use it is I like to put the water on the stamp with the brush. This is just clean water and you're just going to put it on the stamp. I prefer to use the crayons with rubber but if the um, quality of the a clear stamp is good then it works really well so what's good about this is you can just kind of scribble on you don't really need to be like perfect because this is gonna kind of give you the instant watercolor look So you can just color in whatever color you want. You don't have to be perfect. This is going to give you that instant uh, watercolor look. There's a boat here, so I'll color that. I'll put some shadow, a darker color here. And this is Stradler. So that's too much water actually. Like that. And then from here you can kind of move around the colors if you want or if you want to add more colors and you can just get directly from the crayon and then add some color here. So it's not going to give you that crisp um, like a look that you get when you're stamping. It's supposed to kind of be a little bit on the loose side. And that's what I like. This was too loose. So let me try with different color. I mean different crayons. I think I put too much water. You don't want too much water on it. Otherwise, it's going to be like that. Just enough for the um, crayons to um, kind of get wet. So I think crayons are kind of like... Um, it's ink in like crayon form because it has a lot the colors are a lot more richer than um, like color pencils watercolor pencils so I think um, it's kind of like ink on a stick or something so very loose This is the Faber-Castell, um, the kits one. Actually, I'm surprised. I, I haven't used that one yet. 
I just um, got it one day when I was ordering things from Amazon and I needed a little bit more money to get free shipping and I even actually forgot that I had it until I was doing that craft room tour and then I saw it so I'm like hmm these are a lot softer than the Stradler and it's cheaper these compared to these this is cheaper and this is creamier and this works better in my opinion this is my opinion only So that's how I like to use um, my watercolor crayons. Let's try a different one. I like to use like like solid images are fun too like something like this the poppies this is from um rubber neckers that's not gonna fit let's see let's try lira so again this stamp right here has never been um, stamped so I don't know if you can see it's kind of beating up when that happens just um, use like a file use like a file and kind of file it a little bit so that this is not gonna damage your um, stamp it's just gonna give you that little bit more so it'll grab the ink okay so let's try something like this So, the cool thing about solid stamps like this is um, you can really kind of put all different colors. You can even dip this into the water and then... Um, color it in and you'll be able to see where it's colored okay let's put some maybe some brown in the center Put some stem. Okay, like that. And if you think it's too dry, you can always spray. Isn't that pretty? Oh, you can't even see it. So sorry about that. Look at that. That's why I like to use the solid images for things like this. And then here, I'm sure you can. We can get more 
with one um, time you put the pigment, you can get a couple stamps out of it. See that? So when it's wet like this, from here you can kind of move it around and color it in a little bit more if you like. So it's a real easy way to achieve that instant watercolor look. So I love that. Cool, right? I like that. Okay, so I did some right here. This was with the clear stamps at the top. This is a photopolymer stamp set from um, Stampin' Up. And these are clear and it worked really well. Like clear stamps, good quality clear stamps, they will work really well. This was done yesterday and look, you can still move the pigment around. I think that is really cool. You can draw with it and do all kinds of blending things. But um, I'm not an artist, so I'm not going to be like doing all like fancy kind. I just use it with my stamps and for maybe um, art journaling. Okay, another thing that I like to do would be something like like butterflies. Right, these are pretty. Mm, let's try the portfolio. portfolio is like pretty good size let's see don't want this color and let's color let's dip it this time we'll make some purple and blue maybe You see how um, you can like color it. You're dipping it. I'm dipping it in water. You can see the pigment. This is very. Oh, sorry. This is very soft. some purple okay and then let's okay that's a little light let's go darker Okay. 
maybe it was too dry yeah it was too dry so when it's too dry it won't um, give out as much color so from here you can kind of move it around this is a portfolio the oil pastel You know, more color than you can kind of do that. Isn't that pretty? I like it. This is the oil pastels and they don't seem to um, be able to blend as much as the um, what are other other colors. Maybe I'm using it wrong. Let's try something like this again. Oops. I have all of my Easter egg things cut over there, ready to make cards. I think this way is the best. This uh, stamp has never been used either. So we'll see. This is cherry blossoms. So pretty. I could already see there's a lot of water. So if your crayons get like this, then just wipe it off, then it's clean. Trying to see why the light is... Yeah, that's a lot of water, you see, too much. I like this right here. That's pretty. So, there's other ways to use it, of course, but this is um, how I like to use it with my stamps. Okay, I hope it kind of gave you some idea of different um, ones. So, what I prefer the, um, after trying it out, this right here is better than this one, and this costs more. Okay, this is more creamier. This is hard. This is harder. Of course, the Karen Dosh is going to be the best, but it's the most expensive. So if I were to, um, I don't have a big budget and I want a crayon, 
I think this set is really good. The Lyra, the 48, um, is not like as um, less pigmented like the student grade ones. And this um, has really good um, pigmentations just like the artist grade. Okay. So I hope you like this and I'll continue to um, compare other products to kind of give you guys an idea of this and that. Um, I hope the video wasn't too dark. I don't know why. Maybe the light is making it darker. <laughs> Bear with me while I try to fix the lighting. Okay, so if you have any questions or um, anything that you want me to share, please leave a comment below. I'll um, leave a link below for all the supplies if you want to go check it out. Okay, thanks so much. Bye.